Now, what we're going to do here is specifically to look at the clip lock profile roofs and when and how to put a joint in. So if you have a roof that starts here, finishes there, and that's the gutter, at times this length is just too long to physically get it onto the roof because of congestion or you can't physically get it that length delivered on site. So what do you do? Well, you put a lap there. So how do you put a lap on a clip lock type roof? Now, most people, if you've got some experience to the corrugated profile, would do a lap one over the other. And it can be successfully done with a corrugated roof, purely because of the steepness of the roof. And you can actually put a proper seal in there so that the water doesn't leap through the lap. On a clip lock type roof, because it's so flat, water traveling backwards is a real risk. So what do you do? And obviously, the way not to do it is to lap it like you would a corrugated roof because you can never get that joint to seal properly because of the profile. And you may get a leak starting very soon after the installation or a few years when the seal starts to separate and you get water seepage. So how is a lap on a clip lock roof done? Now, all the manufacturers have come up with a system where you could lay a roof and there is a foam that's laid on the downstream end and the upstream roof just goes over the top and there's a slight gap between the upstream roof and the downstream roof and the lower sheet is turned up and the jointing stops most of the water from seeping through and going in and there is no silicon work in there whatsoever. Now the advantage in using this system is that you don't have to do a lot of work to the structure of the roof to make this work. All you need is to be able to lift this up slightly and lower that and the joint will work. Now, I think there are a couple of drawbacks with this system. One, that jointing material is quite expensive. And two, if it's not done properly, there's always a chance of water coming back in and causing a leak at the joint. So it, this becomes a very intricate joint that's got to be done properly. Now, the question is, is that the only way that you can lap a clip lock roof? And the answer is, no, there is another way. And what is this way? Well, it's the old step joint. So what is a step joint and how do you actually make it work? Now, if you've got a rafter that runs like so and you've got battens, and that's your gutter, and the first scenario is if it's a new build. Now all the roof carpenter needs to do is just to put in higher battens or purlins on the upstream end and lower profile battens on the downstream end. And he's created a step joint. Right? So puts a batten there. And that means that the downstream sheet is laid there and the upstream sheet is laid like so. So you create a step joint from the very beginning. Now for some of us we go and have to re-roof. That means that we don't have the luxury of starting new and we have to replace. So what do we do when we need to replace a roof and create a step joint? 
So imagine that we are replacing a roof and the rafter and the battens are already in place. Now in this case, we've got two fixed points. That's a fixed point and that's a fixed point. So we can't move the gutter or the upstream end of this replacement roof. So the question is, what's the best way to create that step joint? Now to make this happen, we've got to do a little bit of homework. We have to find out what the slope is on the roof and whether there's any room for play. Because don't forget that clip lock can go down to one degree. So if this roof is anything more than a one degree pitch, you've got enough room. So once we've done the homework and we've got an existing roof that's steeper than one degree, we can safely say we can reduce the slope of this roof and put in a one degree clip top roof, which means that we can increase that. That stays the same, so the roof now comes out like that. And that gives us the gap to create a step and the second roof goes like that. So now we're able to create a step joint. Now the next question may be, why have we decreased the slope of the upstream section of the roof and not the downstream end? And the answer boils down to pure hydraulics because we have more water load on the downstream end because it's got the rain from here and the rain from here that runs on the downstream roof. Whilst the upstream section of the roof has got less water load to carry. So that's the reason why we can decrease the slope of the upstream section whilst maintaining the slope of the downstream section. So you may ask what's the advantage on creating a deliberate step in the roof rather than using the proprietary joining system of a clip lock roof. For me, there are two main reasons. You don't have to bother with the expensive joining material. And two, you can deliberately design this step joint to be bomb proof and not be susceptible to leakage like the proprietary systems. Now, if you look at this series of pictures of a roof that we install, that's got a step joint in it, you'll see that little bit of detail that we've used on this step joint to make sure that this joint is almost foolproof. And what we do is, if that's the downstream sheet, and that's the turn up, we install the transition flashing there, the top sheet goes to there, and the water dribbles there and runs away. Now, what happens if you've got too much water and you've got water that runs back over the hook and falls in? Now, you can see that what we've done is we've installed the bottom sheet longer than the start of the transition flashing. So to safeguard leakage there, we've got the turn up on the downstream sheet upstream of where the water potentially could leak. So if we ever get leakage there, the water will still get caught and gets drained away. So that joint is virtually bomb proof. So I think this is a far simpler solution to creating a step joint. Of course, you can use what's been provided by the roofing manufacturers because I think their system, even though it's well engineered, is susceptible to poor installation and leakage. So most roofers will one day come up with a roof that's too long to install in one full length and they have to put a joint in the middle and if it's a clip lock roof, you should put a step joint in the middle and you don't have the problem of leakage at the lap and potential long-term corrosion and all sorts of stuff happening at a lap joint because 
you cannot and you should not end lap a clip lock roof sheet. Always put a step joint in.